Hey everybody, it's Shannon Bobo live here at home with Shannon Bobo. And guess what? It's Moon Mystic Mondays, and I'm bringing in our co-host. This is her. This is our Moon Mystic Mondays with Letty Sullivan. Letty, Moon Mystic Monday. Moon Mystic Monday. <laughs> and we are not done. We won't start stopping until we get enough. Until things finally stop. <laughs> 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 Sorry, this is until until we alleviate all of this. Like this is going to be something that we have to discuss. It's a marathon, not a race. So we're here right. again. We're coming from a place from our heart because that's all Letty and I know. We both have been trained hers way more extensively than me, but trained to be in our heart, trained to be in our knowing. And in fact, um, this what we wanted to talk about today, and um, we're hoping that you guys are definitely put your input because you know we're always paying attention and watching. Um, but the word sovereignty, being sovereign and all of this. And Letty, not, she also wrote a book on it that she So it, your book isn't here. She, it's sitting, it's <laughs> sitting right there. I'm going to go get it. Okay, she's going to go get it. So just like a show. she goes and get it, I'll just. I'll, it's a collection. It's a collection. I can make it smaller. I can make her small. But I can never make Letty smaller. Let's just be real. I, I can never technically make her smaller. But she's going to go get the book. And then we're going to talk about that because I think. This is part of our um, our developing into our new world, our new way of understanding, our new way of being. So here's Letty. It looks like she got the the book back. Um, there she is. Sovereign, sovereign unto herself. Unto herself, yes. Okay, and the 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 byline is um, release codependencies and claim your authentic power. So this is a collection of 10 stories, one of which is mine. I wrote a longer essay in here. So it's 10 essays by women um, about circumstances that brought us into sovereignty and claiming our power. And um, what's important about personal sovereignty is that you've got to realize is that this whole system was designed for um, only certain people to have actually freedom and sovereignty. And it's always like, we got to realize the language of the system is always ass backwards. <laughs> I mean, I just can't say it any other way. It's like, it's like the no child left behind act left a whole bunch of children behind. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? And so when the forefathers wrote the Declaration of Independence and all the stuff for this, for the US specifically, it's like liberty and justice for all, but the all was only like white landholder, yeah. men, white men that own land, right? There was no asterisk back then. They When they were saying all, they were talking about all of us, mm -hmm. <laughs> whoever was in the room, not all of y'all. So another thing, just to, just to add a little dot on that, at the time, um, slaves were considered three fifths of a person, even so they weren't even considered a Every person. Child. Considered property, <laughs> so. not just property, but but nothing more than human livestock, basically. Human livestock really yeah. left that in, and and guys, this is like we didn't get we didn't get freed until 1863 or five. And that's like less than 150 years ago, or about 150. Even, a, even after that, slavery just transformed. I mean, if you watch the, mm -hmm. the documentary 13, um, or there's like a 17 minute video I put on my Facebook page at like one o'clock this morning from the gentleman who wrote, uh, who does the television show Veggie Tales for Children. His name is Phil something or another. And he broke it down in 17 minutes what happened after slavery. Wow. And how we got to this point. Mm -hmm. And it encourage so, everybody to watch that, including myself. It's so concise. It is mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. it's just like right to the point. Um, so 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 the thing is is that we've been conditioned and trained to have authority outside of ourselves, to look for authority figures. And unless you are naturally oriented to be independent and free and sovereign. Like some some people are just designed that way. Uh, a lot of us have been, it's been conditioned out of us by society. Mm -hmm. It starts mm -hmm. in childhood. You know, our, I, I chose to be the kind of parent that empowered my children so that they would not have to rely solely on me. But most women um, uh, uh, socialize their children to rely 
completely on them as mothers. Right. And I didn't want to be that kind of mother because I wasn't mothered that way. I was an independent child. So mm -hmm. sovereignty comes to me naturally because I would rather figure it out for myself, you know, take care of it, design it and implement it. That's right. just how, do you, how do we encourage people to gain their sovereignty or to have their voice? Because that's one of my main intentions on this planet. I talk about it every single day. I want to create a space for that everyone to feel heard and everyone to have a voice and everyone to feel empowered. How yeah, do we um, that? It's a well, it's a choice. It's a choice. And and what what people in usually come up against is um, the old programming. Mm -hmm. You know, like I grew up in a religious household that said children should be seen and not heard. And so oh, then after I, <laughs> after I became an adult, mm. I had to find my voice because, you know, the other scripture was train up a child the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. These are things my mother said all the time. That was like the, the, the ethos in our house. Mm. And so I was to be seen and not heard. And she was training me up so that, you know, to be a godly woman, basically, um, and obedient, obedience is a big thing. Um, and, um, I was just trained up that way. So I had to unlearn that. And it took me 20, 20 years, maybe, <laughs> yeah, um, but, but conditions are different. Now. So we don't, we don't, I, I don't think that it takes people in, in this climate right now. It's not going to take you 20 years to undo this and unravel it because mm -hmm. society is unraveling. It so, most certainly is. And it's the most beautiful thing to watch unfold. I mean, we can take this time and be upset and annoyed and feeling whatever it is that's coming up for you is correct. Like if you're feeling annoyed, scared, upset, um, disillusioned, whatever it is, just allow it to be there. But just know that every time there's a major shift, it's, it comes with this. It com This comes with the territory, this pain, this you know, on a micro level and a macro level. We're just, it's wonderful watching us experience this collectively because yeah. we're moving to a time that it can't be undone. And so we got a lot of people moving through fear. What's up, Nina? Nina's on and KCSE there too. Thanks for being on. Um, we see a lot of people moving in fear. Like today I, I turned on, the first thing I see, I do not watch the news, but I find that I get inundated with the news just by being on social media because people are very, away from very it. fast to share posts. And, I, and you know, somewhere in Missouri, a couple um, just started, they brought out their shotgun and the handgun, like to the protesters, they were having a peaceful protest. And I was like, oh man, people are going through it and you're feeling the backlash because, um, you know, I, I think to a certain degree, when you lose your humanity is difficult. Or if you, or if you honestly never looked at somebody that was different than Caucasian as human, that's starting to come up too, I'm noticing. So I'm like, you know, cause where's the humanity and knowing that Every single person deserves um, deserves to be respected and um, and um, revered, you know. Like, so it's just it's interesting watching the backlash, so to speak, and and also in the same time, just remain encourage people to remain steadfast in becoming in their power, having sovereignty, having um, knowing that this is shifting no matter what. Um, we see on the outside, no matter what backlash we're getting, this is shifting. Well, there's a lot of things that that you you have to make space for sovereignty, and it requires a bit of courage because you nobody has the answers that you seek outside of you. You have to turn within and find your answers. But generally, what happens when we turn within is that we find trauma. And pain, mm -hmm. and that's what's happening for so many people. Um, I, you know, I have no doubt. First of all, as a black woman, as a, you know, a, a black-bodied individual on Earth right now, the trauma that's inside of me was passed through my DNA. Yes, for sure. And one of the things I've discovered in talking to my skin folk is that the more melanated you are, the more concentrated the trauma is sometimes. Mm. And because uh, my mother was biracial. So she was half white. And so she taught me to assimilate uh, for a survive as a survival mechanism. 
And so the assimilation strategy was to make sure I was well-educated, to make sure I was articulate, to make sure I was respectful and polite, to make sure that I yeah. basically was a magical Negro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I had to get real I like, I like that there was this quote by Jesse Williams. He said, just because we're magical doesn't mean we're not real. I'm like, because we, because you have to be all of that. I understand that coming from a, a very, very real way. I also believe in, um, in like there's, there's other aspects of it that are also karmic. Like it also has to deal with, because I know some, some melanin um, people who just simply, they, they can honestly say that they've never experienced racism. It's because of their environment and where they travel, where they've been. They just literally have never experienced it. And so it's a blind spot for them too. So it's interesting having these real conversations about what it all means throughout this. And also karmically, like for, ex for example, people who, um, who probably have more money and have access to more resources, um, even though they probably have reported situations of being discriminated against, it's probably not as deeply rooted as it is for, depending on where you grew up, depending on where, how you grew up and who your parents are and all. There's so many different layers and aspects of this yeah, thing. Layers. Yes. It's so layered and, and we're just getting, we're just getting into it guys. Cause, Cause this is, it affects everybody. And I also wanted to ask you a question like simming, simming from what you said about courage. Um, do you believe that trust has to be involved in that too? Um, you know, the thing about trust is that you can, you can only truly experience trust in a couple different ways. Number one, you've got to have some kind of faith. And so there's a lot of people that just didn't grow up in faith-based environments. So, so faith does lead to trust. Okay. So that's one way. The other one is safety and intimacy, right? Safety and intimacy breeds trust also. So mm -hmm. if you don't feel safe, there's absolutely no way that you can bypass the limbic brain to even get into any kind of cognitive field of being able to trust because your fight, flight, fight, flee or freeze is mm -hmm. not going to let anything else get past it. So, and that's triggered by trauma. So you can't get to trust if you're traumatized. So you've got to deal with that first. Um, and, and then intimacy, right? You can't get to intimacy to get to trust until you have safety. So trust is a process. It's not something that you just conjure up. Um, it requires a force of will. Mm -hmm. It requires um, some psychological and emotional stability. Um, because one of the things that keeps you in a stress response is instability and chaos. Mm -hmm. So you can never really, really sink into it until you, you have a stable field. Right. And right now we're, we're literally not there. And I mean, cause we, not collectively, not collectively. you not can collectively. generate that on your own. Mm -hmm. in ways, especially if like you're quarantining alone or something. That's a great distinction. We're not there collectively. Our, our society, <laughs> we've created a system where it's difficult, challenging for people with darker skin to trust the authorities. And it, because of things that, that's taken place and all we're doing is uprooting that and shifting that and that's it. Yeah, before, before everything jumped off with George Floyd, I had that feeling of the analogy of the frog in the pot, you know, like if you, if, if, if a frog jumped into a, a pot of boiling water, it would just hop out. Right. But if the frog was in the water while it was cool and you gradually turned up the temperature, it would just boil and die. And I felt like- no, I've never heard that analogy. <laughs> yeah, wow. hot if the water was already hot, but if you put it in there and the water just gradually increases, it'll just boil. Right. Oh, yeah, right. And so it just felt, I just felt like the temperature was increasing as far as society was concerned, as mm -hmm. far as what was happening with the misinformation and the disinformation and the confusion and chaos surrounding COVID. Um, a lot of this is very deliberate. A lot of the confusion is deliberate um, because there is a, if you, if you, if you wade into the really nasty, choppy waters of white nationalists, and uh, the alt right, they're they're very transparent about the agenda. The alt right agenda is to 
have chaos and upheaval, which check, we've got that. Um, and then what you do is don't do anything about it. So that's why this ineffectiveness of the government and really not trying to help people, because when the existing system breaks down, that is the opening for the system that they want to put in place to arise and emerge. And so the alt-right wants a system where they're, you know, maintains white male size gender majority rule, which mm. is a small minority, right? Well, you know, that's pretty clear. That's not gonna, that's because that's their in place. <laughs> right, the new, the new alt-right guys, the young ones that are jumping on the bandwagon, they're like, I want my inheritance. Like what, what they're facing as a threat is they're losing their inheritance of white supremacy and the systems of white supremacy. So the, the backlash that we're experiencing is them literally in the death throes fighting for their inheritance. Like I am superior, I deserve this, I'm entitled to a society where I'm on the top and everybody else is on the bottom. But that's the thing of, um, of not being in your heart. You know, like, um, cause if you, if, if anyone really truly lived in their hearts, they will want a, a world where everyone's, everyone's um, taken care of and, and um, supported and loved and they wouldn't feel, and if also if you're in your divinity, you wouldn't want to see a world where it exists, where there's somebody that's left behind. So in, in yeah, sense, yeah, like, I mean, like it, it, the bottom line is, I'm not exactly sure. Um, I'm not. A, I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's if that's what's going on. It could be. Well, the chain of causation again. I'm. I'm. I'm talking specifically about a white nationalist alt right mindset. Yeah. Which again, you know, if you listen to any YouTube po videos and podcasts by guys like what's that name Richard, what's his face, and whatever. Um, the thing is, is that we're dealing with a psychology of men who a feel like women are hoes to stick their you know get their rocks off um breeders mm -hmm. um and you know so in and that emotions are not okay empathy is not okay compassion all of that stuff is soft you know this is this is the culture you have to realize there is this toxic death minded culture and it's that's not dying right now <laughs> that's not yeah, completely uprooted right now it's being uprooted, right? Because, because you know, there's a school of thought about the ascension process, right? There's more energy, more light, more consciousness streaming into the planet right now. And as that light comes in, it causes the darkness to rise. Yes. And we're watching all of the, the, the poison. So, so another mm -hmm. analogy is like um, when you're purifying gold or mm -hmm. you know, things like that, the heat, you heat it up. The impurities rise to the top and you skim off those impurities, right? So that's kind of that alchemical process that happens. And so we are in a societal alchemy right now. Yeah, it's completely all this light and heat, right? It's emotional heat, it's spiritual heat, right? That's what the waking up process is. People are waking up and 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 they're heated, right? Look at the <laughs> they heat it up. And so now all the darkness is rising to the top. And 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 so we we skim it off with love. We skim it off with compassion. You know, I, I think about these people that appear to be on the other side of the issue polarized from, from my point of view is just that they have been conditioned and trained um, to be afraid to mm -hmm. say this, this is the only way. And without this way, I will die. In a lot of ways, psychologically, people that have an opposing viewpoint from what we're talking about, yeah, right. are fighting for their lives because they've been told all these horrible lies yes. about people that don't look like them and don't believe like me. So, so the way that I, when I hear people saying ignorant shit, <laughs> just to be real blunt about it, when I hear ignorant shit coming out of people's mouths, I'm like, you know, what Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. For me, it's like, you know, I listen to them and I'm like, if that were true, I'd be scared too. Yeah. But it's not true. It's not but true. What there is more is than enough. It, like it or not, it's, things are shifting. But for them. Oh, I, I, just think, I love it. I love that things are shifting. I love that this conversation is on the table. It's, um, it's wearing on me, to be honest. And 
ironically, I'm watching as friends are that are from different countries are getting the hell out of here. They're like, it's so funny. Like I, I another friend is leaving the country today and she just like, she just can't with what, everything that she's, everything that's unraveling and everything, like it's so much chaos and uncertainty. And it's like, and then we have the pandemic and then we have, you know, and, and I'm just like, my the whole purpose of At Home with Shannon Bobo and Moon Mystic Mondays is so that we could be at the spaces like, listen, this is what is, and we have to continue to acknowledge that this is what's happening, this is what's being, and this is what's coming up for us, and allow whatever it is that's coming up for us to come up, and then just um, just allow the space for it to exist, and then also stand your knowing, stand your power, stand your sovereignty to um, to help create our new world. Because right now there's a space that's becoming available that we cannot process or um, we cannot live in a world that we had before COVID. Like it just uh, it just can't exist anymore. Can't, and we're watching the upheavaling of it. So right. yeah. yeah. The United States of America from an astrology standpoint, and I can't get too deep in it because I'm, I'm Oh I'm, you can get as deep as you want. We can, we can clarify you can you guys can comment later if you're like mm, I don't think so. Comment later or whatever. But we this is true. This is so, so true. Funny. But we are having um, in, in our astrology chart, as far as when this nation was founded, we are in a, a, a return. We're in a return of the energies and the planetary alignment in the cosmos that was around during the, the American Revolution. And so we're, no. this is why Hamilton is so powerful, you know, I, 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 you know. So anyway, just that story of how a small group of people created the uprising against the British and all that story. But the thing is, is that we are in an energetic system that hasn't been around for mm. 240 years. And so it's all coming up again. This is America's identity issues. We are literally in a struggle for the soul of this nation to, to and, and, and you gotta realize the founding fathers were astrologers. They they yeah. <laughs> the way that they laid out DC was with, with, with sacred geometry. A lot of this stuff um is lost esoteric knowledge, is how this nation was founded. And it's only gonna take those of us who have an esoteric understanding to navigate um the collective to where we need to be in a restoration for the divine feminine at the same time, because that has been the component that has been suppressed. That is what has been disconnected mm -hmm. from the process of this nation, which is why it has been dysfunction, dysfunctional and out of alignment with the integrity of nature, this planet and the cosmos. Like we, yes. uh, you know, we've been out of order and we've maxed out the potential for growth in this country because, because it's been based on entropy. You know, it, it, it's been breaking down and now we are at a composting point where we got to fertilize a new garden because yes, exactly. our eyeballs yes. are shit right now. Yes, and eyeballs are shit. <laughs> it's everywhere. Hey, Deborah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Deborah was like, no, get deep. They yeah. like it when we get deep. We like having real, real conversations about this um, and just being truthful and coming from a truthful um, place. And and is what's beautiful too is watching people um, understand their blind spots through all of this, like me, myself included, because I'm learning so many new layers. Like today, yeah. learning that someone, this, this African American man on a call right before this was saying how he's never experienced racism before. And I was like, you big black dude, you didn't ever? And I was like, maybe he turned a blind eye to it. I'm like, I'm impressed that he didn't. And I, I didn't get a chance to ask him where did he grow up or where was his right. experiences. You know, because he possible, didn't. Though. It's, it's actually possible to it's possible. But I'm, that, that surprised me. I was like, oh, that's a blind spot I didn't know. Because I thought, I mean, especially he's the first black person I met that didn't experience racism. I was like, wow, that's impressive. And he's got to be like in his 40s. I haven't. I mean, the racism that I've experienced over my life this Mine is is unpacked for me um, recently, just in the last few years, was is the socioeconomic racism. I, I have been at the effect of socioeconomic racism and 
as I was doing prosperity work and metaphysical work and new thought work, I thought it was because I was attracting it. I thought that it was stinking thinking and, and you know, your thoughts create your reality. So I need to change my thinking to change my reality and stuff. When really I was just swimming upstream yep. with this system that has been giving me headwinds, but no, nobody's ever called me out of my name, call me the N word, whatever. I'm sure it's maybe some of the, the ghosts. Well, I can attest and, and for I anyone, call back I, out I absolutely have. And I've also experienced um, a, like, what you just talked about, like social economic portion of it. And then I've also experienced um, outward, sometimes very subtle racism too, just little things because of even here in, in um, LA, I can name two instances. And this is just, a, I have a myriad. I went to an all white school at Wisconsin. So I got a little bit of stuff there, even though it's a very liberal school, I still got a little bit there. And then here in LA, um, just my experience of even going to a, a, um, a store. Like sometimes my husband and I bring our dogs, our dog with us. And we have a, we have a certificate for her to be anywhere to come with us. She's like our daughter. So whenever I go into the store, it could be the same situation. And I've even experienced this with white, white friends too. I get immediate, like, no, you're not supposed to have a dog in here. Then I have to explain the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. And then my husband can go into the store and then not have any same manager, same everybody and not have the same experience. And then, so that's one way. Sometimes it's very subtle. The other way is um, I've experienced where if I'm having dinner out with my white friends at the same restaurant, same manager, same people, same everything, um, different dining experience than when all of a sudden I'm there with a, a bunch of black girls. And I'm, and I'm just looking at, and I see how they're treating us differently. Like, um, like how are you guys paying for this? We've been asked that before. I'm like, are you, are you serious? We're in Los Angeles. So we've experienced that, um, and just this is way prior to the Black Lives my Black Lives Movement and everything. When my girlfriend, she said, "Oh no, just go to the stores right across the street. Just bring Pete with you." And I'm like, I said, "Trust me, they're gonna say something to me." And maybe I, you know, maybe what you resist persists because maybe I called it forth by saying it. And I said, "No, trust me. I've tried to use my the fact that um, Peach has some ways of getting in by herself." Um, with with her paperwork, I've tried to say that, and they've always dumbed me down. And then, sure enough, but this time I was in my power, and I said, I said, and I looked at the guy, and I said, "Listen, my friend, who's tall, Caucasian, and and gorgeous. Like I, I don't know why I added all of that, but I did. She literally just came in here with her dog like 20 minutes ago, and I know there wasn't a, a shift in um, managers or workers here right. within 20 minutes. So, and I said. And she told me that, she, that you no one said anything to her. And I frequent this store just as much as she does. So I, I want to know why it is that you're that you're pinpointing me. This is a year ago before Black Lives Matter. And this is just me confronting it and saying something. And I was like, I'm the one who I would like to believe we live in a world that's a utopia. Because that's honestly, that's how I um, that's how I have been living. Like I have I, I didn't realize until Black Lives Matter when I was trying to find some black girlfriends. <laughs> to do some things with me. I was like, shoot, I have most of my white, my, most of my girlfriends are white. It just didn't even dawn on me. Then I just realized I, I have so many, I have like an array of just subtle things. It's not, um, you know, when I was a little girl, I didn't get called names at Santa's Village and I got spit on. I got spit on by a white girl when I was a little girl at Santa's Village in Illinois. So I have absolutely experienced racism. I can honestly say that. And it's subtle. I'm still here. Nobody hurt me, but I've absolutely experienced it. Mm -hmm. And so many of us are walking around with these scars. That's why, you know, um, there's a book that I've been reading um, called My Grandmother's Hands, and it's written by a man named Resma Menarchy. Black <laughs> yeah. And uh, Resma. He's coming up a lot. Resma Menarchy. He breaks it down about, you know, white bodied superior. So, uh, white body supremacy, mm -hmm. right? White body supremacy is, um, and it, it transcends ethnicity because mm -hmm. we have to realize that in every ethnicity, the whiter the body, the more privilege you have. So you see this in Brazil, right? Wow. You start mm -hmm. seeing Brazilian people, but then you look and you know on their television news anchors or the women who get chosen to be the queen of carnival or whatever they call her, mm -hmm. um, you know, the difference, 
you know, in tone. It happens in Mexico uh, and in Latin America in general. Um, those who are fairer, wider bodied get more status. It happens in China. Um, I actually, in 2006, was able to go, um, when I was a student at DePaul University, I traveled to China and Mongolia to study the wow. ethnic minority cultures there because mm -hmm. the, the average Chinese person that you see is uh, considered Han Chinese, H-A-N. Um, but they have dark skinned Asian people all over Asia. And yeah, they, right. They get mistreated mm -hmm. you know, in favor of, and then there, of course, the whole skin whitening phenomena that's out there. and Across the board, across the board, we've been perfected to believe that something is better. I can even, um, and, and I dare me say, I've pretty much ruined my own hair, which was beautiful, thick, long, luxurious, because of not thinking that it was beautiful. Straight. Like coming it, straightening it, um, wearing weaves, wearing wigs. Um, doing all sorts of things. My hair is like, maybe not, hopefully not permanently damaged, but it's absolutely damaged because of me not thinking that I'm beautiful enough or strong enough or oh, thinking that I need to do anything. Yeah, I mean, so it, you know, so it's, it's, it's even the psychology. It's the psychology, exactly. Right, that, you know, you it just goes all over. You know, India, mm -hmm. same thing, you know, and of course here in America with our colorism, you know, again, my mother being fair skinned, you know, by, by being biracial, you know, was treated differently in her family. Um, mm -hmm. Right, exactly, Deborah. And so it's like, uh, so white body supremacy is uh, the term that Resma has been using and that transcends ethnicity. So what we're, what we're dealing with is this standard, like the standard of human that everybody is compared to is white, and everything else is a variation of that. That is what mm. is dismantled mm. right now. That is in our in our our cultural collective mindset is that we are we are all like you know God made God made everything in variety, right? <laughs> There's like everything yeah. is all different colors of the same. There's all the different roses, all the different flowers. Like there's everything. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. it's all colorful and diverse and beautiful and wonderful. And what we've been dealt is a hand of programming um, designed to create the kind of hierarchical structure right now that we have with small people on top and everybody else on the bottom serving and sending resources to the top. And we're moving into the natural spiral that that mm -hmm. is natural. Well, I have a question for you. Some, some Yes. I have a question for you. I've heard um, that sometimes they said the, the human condition, no matter what, like for example, um, Esther Hicks or Abraham Hicks, I don't know if you ever delve into that. They just said yes. that if we, if we collectively, I just want to know what you think about this. If we collectively divided every single amount of dollars that's in the entire world and um, divided up and gave every single person it's the same amount to make it all equal pretty soon you'll still have a person who will we'll still have some people on top and some people in the middle we'll just create that again so um they just said that's just like kind of like almost like a human nature thing where there's always someone who's going to be wanting to get paid a little bit more for their skill set that they have or if they think you know like how much i mean that's right i don't disagree we got to realize that you know, uh, like what, where is the I, I would just love the level of playing field to be leveled or like equal. Like where, you know, if, if one person gets a million dollars when they turn 18, maybe everybody should get that amount and just see what they do with it. Or, you well, know, I mean, it's just, it's just. There's like taking out the artificial constructs that are creating the oppression and the injustice is mm -hmm. the main thing. And, and you can let things shake out the way they're supposed to. You know, what we're dealing with is a, a consciousness of artificial scarcity, right? Look at, look at, first of all, look at what's happening. Mm -hmm. with money, money is a societal, social construct. Money yeah. is made up. Okay. We made it up. <laughs> we inherited the programming that says that these little papers, these little pieces of paper have value, right? Yeah. It yes. used to be, it used to be a, a bit different, right? When, you know, back in, back in the day, 
the dollar was on the gold standard. But in 1972, mm -hmm. Richard Nixon took the dollar off of the gold standard and created this fiat currency system, which is basically a made up system of currency that um, everybody just decides that this is what the value is. And um, and they just make it up and they change the rules as they go. But what happens when you have white supremacists running the system is that they rig it and create it so that it, it works the way it works, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing that's happening in the U.S. right now is where is all this money come from? Yeah, right. Where do <laughs> They're like, oh. Remember when, because Bernie was saying, just wipe out school debt. And now all of a sudden we're just. Everybody got a twelve hundred dollars stimulus check, and it's like, mm, wait, where all the money come from? <laughs> you know, and it was funny because I remember having a conversation with some very privileged white people, and we were talking about reparations. And he's like, well, "Where's the money going to come from?" I said, "Every time money is needed, money shows up." Yeah. No, do you, do you, people only ask where the money's going to come from when they think that um, it, it, it's this false idea that if you win, I lose. Mm -hmm. right? It's that yeah, when it's false, that's not that's not true at all. There's a limited pie, and mm -hmm. if, if 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 you get some, then that means I'm gonna have less, and exactly. that's false. It's absolutely false, mm -hmm. and uh, and but it per, it permeates the culture. And one of the things COVID is is is, is um revealing, the pandemic is revealing that. You can, they can just decide to do and put money wherever the hell they want to put that money. It's just numbers on the screen mm -hmm. and it's rules and, and, and protocols that they put into the artificial intelligence that runs the program and decides how this thing goes. It's just, mm. okay, so, so we need to, we need to stop. That's why, that's why people that are in those upper echelons of wealth um, they buy gold, they buy property because the actual tangible things like real estate and, and gold and things like that, that does have value. The paper currency stuff is just, it's just numbers on a screen and it just, doo -doo -doo, it comes in, it goes out, comes in, it goes out, comes in, it goes out to a point where when, when I'm around really, really wealthy people, it, it's a whole other stratosphere of consciousness that they don't yeah. even think about. No. Um, so I do want to sh shift no. gears a little bit because this Sunday, um, excuse me, I beg your, this Sunday, July 4th, this Saturday. Sunday, July 4th is the third and final installment of what you've been doing to help with the, with the meditation full moon series. Mm -hmm. um, Eclipsing injustice. Please share. So there is, um, so, so the, the third, you know, powerful eclipse um, is on July 4th. Uh, especially here in the U.S., uh, overseas, it's going to happen on July 5th, and um, and we are doing our 30 clips gathering. So the first gathering was um, in Sagittarius, um, a full moon lunar eclipse in Sagittarius, a fire sign. We were dealing with rage <laughs> and grief. The second one was a new moon solar eclipse in Cancer. It's a water sign. We were dealing with shame and powerlessness, mm -hmm. right? Second chakra energy. This third eclipse is a full moon, uh, lunar eclipse in Capricorn. Hi, I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> um, lunar eclipse in Capricorn, that's earth energy. We are dealing with scarcity and control issues. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's why I'm talking about currency and money and, and, and this artificial construct of not enoughness that has been designed in the, the coding of our economics. Um, and ultimately the system that says some people have more and some people have less. Um, and that's just the way it is. Well, no, it's just, the, it's just created that way. Um, mm -hmm. So, and the thing is that our planet, if you're working in harmony with her, um, will will generate resources perpetually. Like, you know, what we're doing with energy. We're saying, oh, energy is scarce. Energy is not scarce. The fossil fuels that we're pulling out is a is a is a non-renewable resource. But the sun is a completely renewable, unlimited yes, resource. Yes. Right? So we've gotta we've got to start to shift our consciousness away from this thought of scarcity. There is more than enough. It's just that, you know, let's say water. Water is a renewable resource. There is a universal water element component to what happens on the planet, right? The 
cycle of water. But if Nestle and all these bottling companies keep pulling the groundwater out faster than it can be replenished by the system, then we are out of order. We are operating, you know, scarcity is at the root of our disconnection with the earth. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we mm -hmm. keep trying to control things so tightly, you mm -hmm. know, I'm glad that industries like the dairy industry and the factory farming and commercial foods have had to, during this pandemic, pull back because it's they were just right. consuming resources way faster, mm -hmm. creating artificial scarcity. If you just renew, reuse, recycle, and you work in a spiral instead of this never ending, take, 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 right? And and the mindset is if, well, if I don't take it, somebody else will. Mm -hmm. This is what they say when they overfish. Well, if I don't go fish all these waters, then some other company's going to come and fish these waters like this instead of letting populations replenish and working with the, you know, it's just like, it's not that we have to reverse and stop doing everything that is familiar to us. We just need to add the consciousness, the heart, the empathy, the compassion, the feminine mm -hmm. essence that has and, been denied and disconnected and suppressed. This and I, I have to, I have to admit to you, Letty, um, and I'm sure a lot of people who are um, woke people like me, like just in their hearts and meditate daily and just like to see the good in everyone. I've experienced so many blind spots throughout all of this. And even though I can say that I, I, I have, and it hurts me every time I was like, wow, this is, I can't deny that I just got discriminated against because literally my friend was here 15, 20 minutes ago with her dog and no one said anything. And now then especially my husband, my husband, it took him a lot to, he's like, oh, wow, that really did just happen. So anyway, aside from all of that, I'm experiencing a major blind spot and realizing that there's so much resistance in this change because again, people live in scarcity thinking. They said, well, what's gonna happen to me if I have end up having to share, um, I have to share in the good and share in the unlimited resources and like, um, or deservability, like these people, I think it's been ingrained in some cultures too, to believe that we're not good enough. Like thinking that if you have darker skin, you're not as important or you're not as smart. I mean, we even talked about last week, the doll test about how like literally kids of all ages believe that these, um, these dolls that were Caucasian were better than the dolls that were black and they called them bad. So it's, this is like deeply rooted within us that- um, It's in the air that, we breathe, honey. It's in the, yeah. it's in the it's in the ethers, you know? Yeah, and, um, and it's a major blind spot for me because I have been walking around spiritually bypassing everything. Cause I, cause I, I have been walking around thinking, oh, all is well, it's gonna get uprooted. People believe in me and I'm so shocked. And, and when I realized that, wow, like there's a lot of people who um, don't want things to change. Cause they've been, yeah. they've, benefited greatly from it. Well, and then the other but that's about control. That's why mm -hmm. the third eclipsing injustice thing is about control. Think about, you know, once uh, see a lot of I I, I <laughs> um I'm I'm no different than anybody else. I like to control my environment as best I can because that's what makes me feel safe. Mm -hmm. So I'm, just, I'm not coming from any kind of speaking on high about this thing. Um, I wouldn't consider myself a control freak. I'm flexible, but <laughs> I'm a professional organizer. I like things a certain way, mm -hmm. right? So um, I like things to be orderly, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I will, I will literally roll up my socks in my drawer. I will literally turn all the labels facing forward. I do that. I don't think it's OCD. <laughs> I don't think it's OCD. I just yeah. think I want to. Okay, it's my OCD, Letty. It's not OCD at all. <laughs> <laughs> see it so I can keep moving, right? right. I don't. I, I like to have an efficiency of order. order. Yeah, so you can go about your business um, and then you can worry about where the other sock is. I get it. <laughs> where it gets where it gets disordered is mm -hmm. when I step out of myself mm -hmm. and come mm -hmm. over there and try to tell you what you need to be doing. Okay, and you have not given me consent. Mm -hmm. to do it, mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So the the key to the, the key to um, healthy control versus dysfunctional control is consent. But, and that's what's happening in society. That is where this dismantling is now occurring is that there is so much occurring 
on a mass scale without the consent. And, and I keep saying over and over again, we, because of the pandemic, because the global society has all had to change at once, we have to rebuild this world so that it works for everyone. Yes. But we can only do that with consent and consensus. Yes. We tr- the, like, like what they did in South Africa with the truth and, and reconciliation mm-hmm. um, after apartheid. We need that on a global scale, right? Truth and reconciliation. And right now we just have a lot of disinformation and control dramas and schemes, uh, people doing power plays, you know, literally operating in the art of war, you know, um, Sun Tzu, mm-hmm. you know, mindset. Um, and we have to roll that back. That is, the, we, have, we have taken the art of war um you know to to its zenith and we are we are annihilating ourselves mm-hmm. as humanity we are in a mass extinction you know there have been mass extinctions throughout the 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 history of this planet we are in a mass extinction now and if we don't turn the tide right now then we are going to be extinct too because we are operating that way we are killing our host you know, the, the system is like a cancer and love is the chemotherapy. <laughs> it's what we got to do. Yeah. Imagine that love is the chemotherapy. Wow. That was very, very, very powerful statement. And I just in my listening to you and really hearing what it is you're saying in the midst of everything, for some reason, just hearing love as the chemotherapy re- immediately got me back down in my drop down and in my heart and knowing that while we are moving through this and as challenging as it is and like just seeing it from all perspectives including all perspectives knowing and trusting that um within our heart this all can be healed if we all reach into our heart space so i'm just holding this space for as many people as possible to drop down into their heart as fast as possible so that we can move through this with grace and ease and and, and create harmony. That's but, what I would love to have. Well, and to be to be completely real about it is that a lot of us drop into our hearts and they're hurt, they are broken, they are torn, ragged, or they are spiky and hard, um, you know, crusted mm-hmm. over and, and like a shell, like a hard shell of a crab mm-hmm. or a, a so it like, takes it's, it's gonna take some it's gonna take some work. Yeah. It's not gonna be done overnight. That's why I said it's not that, you and I keep talking about this. This is not a a, a race, this is a marathon. This is we, yeah, it's not a sprint. This, this is America. gonna take a long time. Like it, it, it's gonna be a lot of resistance. Like I, I have a visual that did you see that couple in Missouri? They're rock, he's walking with a shotgun, she has a gun in her hand with just some peaceful protesters walking by their house and they're like and they just look like somebody, they look like some of my friend's parents. They look like regular white folks. But see, again, these people are scared. Why? Very because scared. the ecosystem is contaminated with thought viruses that says that you're not safe, that they're coming to take your home, they're coming to take, they take what we say about wanting economic equality as, again, if you're That's in not a- not enough and you're gonna take all my stuff. Right, it means that if you win, I lose, which means if you get yours, then you're gonna take mine. It yeah, is not true zero, at all. It's a zero sum mm-hmm. game, and it's just it's a lie. We're just saying not being redlined anymore when we go to get a loan. That's it. <laughs> the, I mean, it, it. We cannot. We cannot make up for the past. And yeah. when I showed that video, um, that's on my Facebook page to my son, I literally, I, I wept. There's a video on your Facebook page. Do you mind dropping yeah. it in the comments later? And then also. Please, please, please. Um, oh, and Deborah just said that was the ma- that was the mayor of that city. She said that was the mayor of the city. Who said, what? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a whole nother conversation. Thought virus. Um, oh wow. Thought virus. Yep. Thought virus. Who are they listening to? Mm-hmm. They're here. What are they saying to them? And not only that, but look at the media. Look at the images. You know, they show the images of violence and they've been doing this for like 50, 60 years. It's not, it's not new. It's just more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I feel, Shannon, Mm -hmm. that it's not going to take as long as maybe it would have been in the past for for a couple of reasons. Number one, the, the, the planet is all on 
the same conversation right now with yes. this woman. And that's the first time ever. This isn't going away. The cool part is it's not a newsflash. I'm sorry for cutting you off. I want I want you to finish. It's not, we have to keep this, this. That's why we've been talking about it. So we, we're, 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 you and I talk about ways we can heal it and acknowledging it and what we can do about it, including the moon ceremony that's yeah. coming up. That's, that's viewed by tons of people. Thousands of people are on this channel viewing Letty as she leads this, this, um, this moon, this amazing moon ceremony. I jumped on it um, once and I was like, this is powerful. Yeah. Then, so anyway, so just continue on. Sorry about that, honey. Yeah. Ooh, I just got a low battery symbol. Okay, I can make it, it's 10%. Um, so <laughs> it's like that low battery thing came up. Um, but yeah, um, so Eclipsing Injustice, um, mm -hmm. I guess this would be a news flash for your, for your audience, um, but we will continue the work um, beyond yeah. Eclipse because the eclipse portals actually have a, um, a, a, a effectiveness or an influence period for six months afterwards, which means that this eclipse portal and this energy will run through the end of 2020, um, December 29th, um, to be specific. And so, um, eclipsing injustice won't be um, new and full moon, it's just going to be full moon. Um, and we will continue to have discussions um, with the people that are presenting and holding ritual space with me. That's beautiful. On the Eclipsing Injustice Facebook page. Um, so we are in the process of doing the launch, uh, creating the launch. But Very beautiful. it'll be um, uh, a, a, a small heart contribution uh, monthly of $33. It will benefit the goddess ministry so that I can continue this work. Um, and um, you can pay $188 for the remaining of the year, or you can pay $33 a month. Um, and you know, if you got a couple friends sitting with you, that's like you know, getting a meal, but I'm giving you soul food, so <laughs> um, once a month, um, but not just once a month, but we'll continue doing this dismantling work because here we, we just we just did the big six, you know, we got uh, grief, rage. Uh, shame, powerlessness, control issues, and scarcity. I'm sure there's some more <laughs> that We're we healing it all. We're healing it all. We all it. It. And and just to continue on, you said um, I, I I didn't want to get lost with what you were saying about um, like it was on the tip of my tongue, and I just didn't want to miss that because it seems incredibly important too. But everything you shared is important. Um, but we're About witnessing the movies or well, the part that we're witnessing people feeling like they're if, if you say you get mine, you, you uh, we just want we want to share in the wealth, and they think that it means that theirs is being taken away that they yeah. that they don't have access to it. And then you said, and then you were gonna add another point, and then oh, I did have another point, mm -hmm. um, and I, I really didn't want to lose that because um, it just felt super important. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, let me see if I can backtrack. So, so one of the things is that you know we we have to deal with a fundamental shift in um, verse from a win lose zero sum game to there's more than enough good to go around because there is there's actually more than enough good to go around. When we talk about creating a world that works for everyone, that means that you get to keep keep your stuff. But you don't have to do that at the expense of others. Yes. Right. And we're starting mm -hmm. to see the, the pandemic is revealing this now, mm -hmm. you know, that, oh, the government can, you know, make pay, you know, pay everybody a living wage, you know, that mm -hmm. wants one. Like you could actually give people money, you know, mm -hmm. which is what's happening with me with unemployment. Like. I haven't had to get file for unemployment since the last recession back in 2008 <laughs> when I lost my corporate job in Northwestern University and, um, you know, had to collect unemployment. And now we're doing it again and it's sufficient. You know, my husband was able to, to continue to receive his salary. I have a salary. We're not struggling. Mm -hmm. Right. And but I also was able to get a, a small business development loan for SBA, which is helping me build out the membership community for the goddess ministry, which yes. I was working with a, a, a community development organization in November and December, making a business plan, taking these workshops and courses and stuff to try to get a micro loan. And I just got it because of the pandemic now. 
And it, it wasn't about my credit score and not being enough and all these hoops they had to jumping into. And I, I had- well, a, like, That's a way to rebuild society, rebuild the world. And there's more than enough. Right. And I, I knew exactly what to do with it. And it's mm -hmm. been helping. And there's a lot of small businesses that are able to access financing and funds that they weren't able to get before the pandemic. And I, and I had this thought like, oh, this, maybe this is what it's like to have privilege, to actually just go fill out the application and send it in and then get approved and, get approved and move on and do what you have to do instead of take this credit counseling course, come do this thing and this thing and this and jump mm -hmm. through this and do that thing and da, 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 and then get this much money. It, it's just a very interesting juxtaposition that I've been noticing, you know, in this pandemic. And I feel like it's part of the unraveling and dismantling of this racist construct, right? Because nobody's asking me whether I'm black or not when they're giving me these small business funds. But yeah. I know exactly what to do with them because mm -hmm. the goddess industry is growing, you know, it's growing. Mm -hmm. You know, I have exposure, I have tech support, I have software, you know, to, to do yeah. that I couldn't do before. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's just, it's powerful. The world is shifting. Very powerful. You know, the eclipsing injustice is energetic activism, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. That phrase came to me. And it's like, it's, especially when people are asking what they can do, it's like shifts your consciousness and what's going on on the inside will help change how things are on the outside. And it does begin with the individual. And if each one of us do the inner work, which is, which is heavy lifting, because it's like, because we, we have to change the way we saw things as a whole. And it's obviously we can see that's very challenging for people. Like Deborah said, that was the actual mayor. <laughs> I'm gonna look at that again. But she said that was the mayor of the city coming out with a gun just because people walked by their house protesting. Right. So this, yeah. again, we're, this is shifting whether or not if you like it or not. And Letty, thank you so much as always, like just guiding us through this. And, and again, uh, we're gonna put it in the link if anyone wants to um, join the final installment for now, because then it's gonna go just to uh, full moon, just full moons every month. Um, with this. And, and, and what I'll do on the new moon is I'll have mm -hmm. a ritual, I'll do a video and I'll mm -hmm. that. And, and so you'll have, you'll still have new moon, full moon, but we'll be all together. On a full moon. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much, Letty. The whole year. Got, you can follow all, her. All the dates. It's amazing. Um, you can follow her at Goddess Ministry and, and um, just so grateful to always have you on here every Monday for Moon Mystic Mondays, just to keep talking about just how to continue to unfold regardless of what's going on around us. And it seems like every week there's something new. <laughs> like, but thank you so much, Letty. Okay. And thanks everybody. <laughs> subscribe to um, Shannon Bobo, actor, and then follow her at Goddess Ministry. It's spelled exactly like that on Instagram and follow her on Insta uh, Facebook and everything. Um, yeah, Amanda says she's oh, just tuning in, but she can't <laughs> be kidding. Yeah, just so just follow her everywhere. And again, we're gonna drop all the information for this Sunday's full moon eclipse um, that Letty is running again. So thank you so much, Letty. We'll see you all next right. week. We'll see everybody next week. Bye. Bye.